This week is pretty big. We have new limited editions from Essence and Countries. We have a new collection from Kiko that I already did a video on. And there are many, many more releases that we have to talk about. This is gonna be quite a video, so let's quickly get into it. All right, we're gonna be starting out with the regular programming, just the few releases here and there that are happening. And at the end, I'm gonna get more into detail about the Kiko Essence and Countries collections, because that is gonna be like a longer segment per new release. I quickly want to touch back on the new Huda Beauty collection, the Icy Nude collection. When I was talking about this last week, I didn't know it would be released or revealed. The day it's not released yet, at least not on Huda Beauty website. I cannot get it anywhere yet, but I believe it's on Sephora. So I couldn't really like directly talk about the eyeshadow palette because at that point it was still like a leak. So we have a collection, we have some blushes, some liquid blushes. I actually am really interested in the lightest shade. I do really like the formula of these liquid blushes and that lightest shade looks like a really nice kind of like cooler brown that I could also use as a bronzer. So I might pick that up when I pick up the palette because at this point I am planning to pick up the palette. I do sometimes change my mind, especially with these more like mainstream releases that everybody is reviewing. Sometimes at the point that I get to purchase it, I'm like, there are so many videos out. Am I really that personally excited about it? And sometimes I skip it as with the like blur foundation that I didn't get in the end. I do really like the look of the palette. I feel like there are many, many shades in there that can give you different looks. And these are also the shades that I really like. I feel like the formulas that are in here and like the different textures are also really promising. So I am planning at this point to pick up the palette, but if I feel like I have bought too much makeup, if I feel like it isn't really like that relevant anymore and it's not really for me, I might skip it. Like, let me know if you want to hear my opinion. We also have some glosses. The glosses I'm not going to go for because I have seen some lip swatches of this formula that looked just a little like uneven, a little blotchy, a little like it really sunk into the lip lines and that is not something that I want so I'm not gonna risk it but I will probably pick up the palette and one of the liquid blushes. Then e.l.f. is coming out with their bronzer and contour, camo liquid bronzer and contour. That didn't make any sense. Their camo liquid bronzer and contour is available now on the e.l.f. website. It gives you a sun-kissed sculpted natural finish look, highly pigmented and long-lasting. These are gonna be nine dollars each. When I saw this first release, I was kind of like intrigued. I was kind of like, I really want to try that, but I haven't tried the blush formula from e.l.f. just yet. I don't know if I will because I do hear that it's very pigmented and I'm kind of scared that it might be too pigmented for me. Also, e.l.f. is not really a brand that I personally get really excited about. I love the idea of a liquid contour. That's why I was like, hmm. I picked it up, but I don't know if it's necessary. I don't know if I really need it. I kind of don't really need it. I have so many liquid bronzers. I have so many bronzers in general, and I have some like really, really favorites. So I'm kind of like still in the fence with this one. Then we have a new pumpkin spice collection from the Pastel Roses UK. We have kind of like this, I don't know, kind of like different take on pumpkin spice. I haven't seen any video on this yet. I might check out Caitlin Costco's video on this because I know she gets this in PR. Uh, the shimmers look really nice, but also kind of like not super pumpkin spice-esque. It looks kind of like the pumpkin spice palette that I would like because I don't wear like super warm tones. Usually I try to avoid that. Like we have some cool tones in this palette as well. We have a shade called Pumpkin and we have a shade called Spice that seem more warm, but the rest seems pretty cool toned. Like a part of me kind of likes this, but I also know that this like shipping and taxes makes this a lot more expensive. And this is not an expensive brand, don't get me wrong. Like this is a pretty affordable brand, but it will make it more expensive and I don't really know if it's worth that for me right now because I'm getting a lot of makeup in, I'm buying a lot of makeup and also I'm kind of like overwhelming myself with new releases and I need to like free up some space in my schedule for my declutter series. I was planning to start filming the declutter series this weekend but then I got in a few new palettes. Like, I bought them myself. It's my own fault. I bought some palettes and I was like, no, I need to film with that this weekend, but then I probably won't have that much time to 
start filming the clutters and also I have to plan it a little bit because then I have to like clear this table I have to change like the whole setup and I don't want to do that for just like two videos I want to have that set up for a little bit so I can film everything kind of like one after another so I need to chill a little bit because the clutters are coming and I also just need to review the things that I have so even though I think this looks really cute I'm not gonna buy it the NC Rain Cosmetics Nutty by Nature palette Last week we saw a sneak peek and now actually some videos are already out. It has been revealed. I don't know if it's already available. Yes, it's already available. It's $30. The first look at this palette, like the first overview of this palette, I thought I might pick that up. That actually looks really cute. I really like the packaging. I like the vibe. But once I started seeing more pictures in different lighting, I thought... Hmm. This is not exactly for me and this is going to be a range of different eyeshadow palettes that are this size that are based on like forced creatures. So I think there's going to be one that's going to be more perfect for me. I kind of like it but I feel like that squirrely shade and then that kind of like orangey shade next to it. Those are going to be pretty warm for me and then the shade Secret Stash. I thought it was going to be more of like a silvery taupe but it's pretty like green, silver and... Like pretty bright green and that is not really what i was hoping for with this color story so i'm gonna skip it but i do think it's really cute i'm excited to see what else is coming from them then glam light is coming out with the trick or treat collection the palette looks very warm toned very kind of like smoky warm very halloween i totally get it but for me these glam light halloween releases they are like a blur like they are just happening and i am somewhat aware of them but I don't even really know like the differences between them because I never know any of the movies or what it is about. I'm gonna skip on this. Like, I don't want Halloween themed makeup in a sense. Like, that's not entirely true. I do like kind of like a witchy, kind of like a more magical vibe when it comes to Halloween, but I don't want it to be like horror. And I know I keep saying that, but that is just the truth. Okay, this one I'm really on the fence about. This is the Cosmic Brushes Sinister Mystery Box. This was on a pre-order yesterday. I don't know if it's still available, uh, but it's also going to be available for like a general sale the end of November. They had a little bit of a delay and these were supposed to come out like way before Halloween, but they are coming out after Halloween. Definitely not what they would have wanted, I know. I don't know how this is going to sell now, but I almost was like okay i'm just gonna go for it but there are some things that helped me back and why i ended up not buying it so it said that the palette inside the mystery box is designed with creatives in mind with bold colors and textures perfect for creating editorial inspired looks i don't really mind very colorful looks in a way like on a day-to-day, -day, on average, I'm a little softer in my makeup. I do kind of like more neutral-ish looks with kind of like neutral adjacent colors. Like for example, this, it's colorful, but it's still kind of like, like a berry is a little bit more safe than a blue, for example. So I keep it a little bit in that kind of like purple, pink, berry realm. But in a way, I wouldn't mind it. Like, I like to play with color as well. I'm on YouTube. It's just another type of environment for me. Like, I'm not going out to the supermarket per se in blue eyeshadow. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I don't know. But then I saw that there were some swatches that were kind of like these almost like black lipstick and black lip gloss swatches and there are seven full-size products in this so you get the palette you get the two lip products i'm guessing and then some other things as well and just knowing that there's probably gonna be black lipstick in there kind of like turned me off from this next to that influencers are gonna be receiving this earlier and i'm not on the pr list and I would, if I would buy this, I receive this in November. And then everybody would have already made up their mind. Maybe it's already sold out. So it's kind of like, is it perfect for me? Probably not. I do love cosmic brushes, but it's not going to be my perfect collection. Is it going to be good for a video? Also, probably not. So in the end, I decided it's probably not a good idea. If I see some videos of people unboxing this and I'm like, that is just the most beautiful palette I've ever seen in my life. I need that. And I'm just gonna like accept the fact that I get two black lip colors that I'm never gonna use. 
that might happen, but it doesn't make any sense for me to buy it on pre-order, at least. Then we have these new lipsticks by Lisa Eldridge. These are the Rouge Experience Refillable Lipstick. It's available in eight colors. It's gonna be $59, I'm guessing, for like the full thing, like the package and then the inside, like the refill, and then the refill is gonna be $30. That is quite expensive. Is that really the price? I don't see a lot of information here. A part of me does want to try Lisa Eldridge. I think she's a very interesting creator. I have watched her and really enjoyed her tips. And also I hear a lot of good things about the brand, but it's a luxury brand. I usually don't really use luxury because I know that I already spent a lot of money on makeup and also buying luxury like that's gonna be too much so i'm interested in these but i'm probably not gonna buy this anytime soon and then nala is coming out with some holiday sets we have some sets with their cupid's arrow which i love i use the cupid's arrow almost every day like almost every time i do my makeup unless i forget i always use these in a while like this is such an amazing formula very creamy very long lasting very easy to use beautiful colors there's so many options i almost regret buying the cupid's arrow number two now now, like I didn't know this was coming. I, I recently bought the Cupid's Arrow number two and it's in a set here. And in the set we have one shade that is like the regular line shade. It's not limited edition. And then we have two shades that they developed especially for the set. And then it's discounted. If I would have known, I would have bought the set with the Cupid's Arrow number two. Like those shades look really nice. I love the kind of like soft cool tones really beautiful but i'm not gonna buy that right now and then we also have a set of a viper lip mask but these are like four minis and i really like the lip mask by nala it's very hydrating it's very nice but that packaging is really big really bulky if i could just pick this up in store i might have just gotten that because that is really nice to just like throw in a makeup bag throw in your like toiletry bag take it on vacation like the big packaging that they have is just it's a lot. And also this has like four different like scents. We have coconut, we have peach, we have cookies, and then we have the purple one. Is that like violets? I would buy this if I could easily get it in store, but I can't, so I'm gonna skip this. Then we have the Colourpop Cosmetics and Frosty the Snowman collab. I don't know what this is. I am not familiar with Frosty the Snowman. I don't know what this means. I just know that this looks cute. And I was debating getting this for a little bit, like not super seriously, but I was just kind of thinking about it. Would this be my call of order? And the answer is going to be no, because in a sense, what I really like about this is the pastel shades and the frostiness of this. But I do have palettes that can get me that look. And it's also not a look that I feel like I really need from Colourpop or really need in the form of this palette. Also, I'm not aware of what this collaboration exactly is. And it always kind of feels weird to buy something that I'm not like understanding in that way. I do like the color story. I do like the vibe. I think like frosty Christmas and frosty holidays is one of my favorite themes. Like I love glamorous, but frosty is just so cute and just a little different from what we always see then we have a new shade of the essence juicy bomb this is a chocolate lot to handle chocolate lot to handle i'm guessing this is a brown shade i really love the juicy bomb glossy butter bomb i have four shades i really enjoy them they do have that very typical kind of like chemically sweet essence scent so i can look past it because i really love the formula but be aware of that I might pick this up if I see it. I think it's not going to be like super, super deep, dark on the lips. And I do kind of like that hint of like a brown lip without it being like crazy vampy for like a fall look. Then Revolution has come out with a new Pout Bomb lip line. Like they have seven new shades and they've also come out with new Forever Flawless eyeshadow palettes. I made an order for these Pout Bombs and I made an order for the Forever Flawless palettes. Were you wondering what was on my eyes? It's one of these Forever Flawless palettes. It is a Makeup Revolution palette. The video is gonna be up hopefully tomorrow, maybe Monday. We're gonna see how it's gonna go. I am gonna do a lip swatching video with the Pout Bombs and I'm gonna do a video with three looks with three eyeshadow palettes for the eyeshadow palette. So it's gonna be separated, but all the information is coming to you. It took me a little while to order this because it had been available on Boozy Shop for like a week before I ordered it. I was just like, 
is it gonna be the good formula is it gonna be like the formula from the icon palettes or is it gonna be like the old kind of like crusty dusty revolution formula i was a little scared but i also thought this is gonna be like the true test like is makeup revolution truly going in the right direction is makeup revolution kind of like becoming the new ph cosmetics i just i was just curious so i did pick it up Keep an eye out for those videos. Skin by Kim Kardashian is coming out with new lipsticks. When I saw this, I was a bit confused. I was like, is this new? Is this truly new? Haven't we seen this before? I have not been paying that much attention, so it could be me, but these are in a creamy, buttery texture. So I'm guessing that is a difference. And then we have 10 classic nude shades for $29. Shades of these just really don't appeal to me. I just love a little bit of an undertone, a little bit of freshness, a little bit of pink, a little bit of peach, maybe even a little bit of red. And they kind of have that, but it's so muted. This is not gonna be for me. And then Glamlight is also coming out with a spooky mystery box. It's a $125 value for only $40. In the box is a mirror, a highlighter, a palette, lip products, lashes, eye base, and a setting spray. It is available now. It doesn't say if it's like new products or old products. So I'm guessing it's products that they've already had in their collection this is not really the type of mystery box that i usually go for i find it a little risky even though i don't have a lot of glam lights but i can imagine if you're a glam light fan you might get doubles even though it's a good deal like monetary wise it sounds really nice but sometimes it's better to just take that money and just buy what you would really really want from a brand and then in the end you'll end up happier with what you're getting. Then YSL is coming out with new blushes. This is the Make Me Blush Powder. It gives a healthy glow to the cheeks while blurring the skin and covering it with a soft veil. It has a silky texture. It doesn't really seem really shimmery in these pictures, so I'm guessing it's kind of like that skin-like sheen. Um, it looks quite nice. I quite like the packaging. I quite like the colors here, the selection of shades looks really good but i am not in the market for a ysl blush right now so i'm not gonna be picking this up then the holiday duos the eyeshadow duos that i did share kind of like some sneak peeks of i feel like these have really shook the beauty community to its core i have seen so many videos just about people being shocked that these are 42 dollars these look amazing these look really beautiful i do feel like was it really necessary with some of them to be a duo like the difference in color is sometimes a little like on the slight side the shimmers look really nice but for me like this is gonna be you know like i was slightly interested because you can always get me excited about a shimmery eyeshadow but i just feel like it's kind of unnecessary i think a lot of people are gonna be picking this up just to see if the price is worth it and just because everyone is so shocked but it's not gonna be me. I'm just gonna leave that to the other beauty YouTubers. I was slightly interested until I saw the price. Like, I still think a lot of people are gonna be buying this, honestly. All right, let's talk about the new Essence collection. This is the My Heart Beats Disco collection. I did post this on my community tab a few days ago and I got a lot of response and a lot of people that really didn't like this. I don't know if this is gonna be like the general like consensus about this collection. But a lot of people were like shocked at how cheap this looks and shocked that we have once again a Essence limited edition. So this collection I do feel like looks better than the Christmas collection. Honestly, it's a little better. It's a little better. It's still a lot of accessories. It still looks a little bit cheap and it doesn't inspire me like a lot. So we have this Disco Ball lip gloss. Someone in the comments said that there is a brand that only does this type of like disco ball lip gloss packaging. So this could be kind of like a copy of that. I'm not aware of what the brand exactly is. I haven't heard of it. But honestly, I think that lip gloss looks really gimmicky. I might pick it up. I'm not sure yet, actually. And we also have a glitter eyeliner. We have a tweezer. We have some face gems. We also have this glitter highlighter that... I might pick up, it could be interesting. It feels a little bit like just looking at the color as if it could be a dupe for that Fenty Diamond Balm highlighter. So kind of interested to see if that would be the case. Then we also have a glitter switch, kind of like a berry pink liquid lipstick. And we have some sort of like, what is it? A keychain bracelet. I don't really know what's going on here. So this collection, I get like, 
the outrage about how this looks. It doesn't get me super excited. I also feel the In The Bloom Light collection made me so excited. It just was so amazing in like the product choice and just the whole vibe and just the design. And these collections, like the past two collections that we've seen, they feel a bit more cheap, they feel a little bit more lazy, they feel a little bit more easy. It doesn't feel like they spend a lot of time on this. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I would just like combine the two collections. I will buy two things from the Xmas Kisses collection and I will maybe buy like the glitter switch liquid lipstick, the glitter highlighter and the glitter eyeliner from this collection. Would that be a good idea maybe for a video? Uh, but personally, this doesn't get me very excited. I want to give you the information about Essence, but yeah, these past two collections, they aren't really doing it for me. I have to be honest, like a lot of what Essence does, I get pretty excited about. I feel like they have good makeup, but you kind of have to like weed through some like bad products sometimes to get to the really, really good stuff. And I don't really know what they are doing right now. Okay, what I'm really excited about actually is the new Catrice collection. So that this hasn't been announced in a lot of places. Like it's a little vague. I don't have all the information yet. I haven't gotten the official press release email yet. But this is the Catrice Festive Treasures collection. It's all a bit confusing. I do not have all the information yet, but I just wanted to share with you what I know. So we have a palette. This is a face and eye palette. We have six eyeshadow shades and then we have two cheek shades. It kind of looks like the cheek shades, the blush and the highlighter would be creams. Like they kind of look like they aren't powders, just the way they show them in the pan. So it could be that it's kind of like a more creamy, glowy formula. I don't know. Um, I actually like the look of this quite a bit. I like the look of this palette as a whole a lot more than the look of the palette that we had last year, even though the quality of that was really nice. It also felt a little bit unusable. It was kind of like a jumble of very bright colors and it wasn't really like making sense to me. Like, how do you even use it? it like, it didn't have shades that really blended well into each other. It was a strange palette. Usually I'm not really into like a combination of cheek products and eye products in a palette. I don't really love full face palettes, but if it's done well, I can be convinced just like with that kind of like fall-esque, the cozy palette that they've come out with with their last update. I did really like that one. And I do like this overall vibe, like the pinky berry neutral colors with those kind of like pinky champagne cheek colors. I think this look makes sense. So I'm excited about this. I also think the packaging looks really nice. Like this looks promising. As I said, I'm actually quite excited about this. I am very much looking forward to when I will be able to buy and try this. Then we also have some liquid blushes. So we have two shades of liquid blush and these are kind of like with the dropper, we have a warmer shade and then kind of like a cooler tone pinky shade. Uh, that looks pretty interesting. I am not sure if I'm gonna buy both. If you wanna see both, let me know, but I might just pick up the more like cool tone pinky one just to see what the formula is like. And we also have some eyeliners. We have a green one, a black one and a nude one it seems, but it's a little hard to see. Oh no, 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 no. It is a green one or kind of like a tealish one. And then it seems like it might be kind of like a light gray or a champagne. And then we also have two lipsticks. One seems more of a muted red and one seems more of like a pinky, nudish pinky shade. Overall presentation and packaging, really beautiful. I feel like they really like carried on with the theme from their advent calendar, which I was a huge fan of. I feel like they executed their advent calendar really well. If you haven't seen that video and you're kind of like debating if you want the advent calendar and you don't mind seeing what's in it, I would recommend it. I guess 4 to 5 euros for 24 products and I was pretty impressed with what we got. Like the theming was really nice and I just like that we have kind of like that red velvet with the golden details here as well. You know what? I might just pick up this whole collection. It's not a very big collection. I do like the choices that they've made here. We really have like items that are truly like colored makeup unless what essence is doing right now and i'm just really liking it the eyeliners the lip products the blushes and the palette i could get on board with all of that so i'm really liking it let me know how you feel about this collection like what are you excited to see all right lastly 
The Kika Milano holiday collection has been revealed and released. It always happens very quickly. I did a video with a first impression of a lot of the products. I showed swatches, I do a look, I give you a lot of information. So check out that video if you wanna see like about the quality of the products. I'm not gonna be holding them all up right now because there's just a lot of information in that video and this video might get like really long. I've already been filming for a little bit, but I just wanted to go over some of the products because I did go into store, I did swatch them and I do have some thoughts about them that could be helpful when you make your decisions. I do feel like this collection is once again more on the costly side. It's once again a bit more expensive than what we're used to from Kiko Milano. Like it's pretty much normal for them to make their holiday collection a little bit more expensive because it's just a time of year that people are willing to spend money on makeup. Like a lot of people who usually don't buy a lot of makeup also just buy makeup like during the holidays, before the holidays, in the festive season to like have some new makeup to wear to like a holiday party. At least that's how I see it or like you can gift it to someone. So I did try to kind of like try out some of the things, swatch some of the things. The first thing that I was originally planning to buy but didn't pick up is the Holiday Wonderlights scents. And these are scent mists. So they are not super concentrated. They are not as concentrated as their perfumes that they have recently released. These smelled really, really familiar and these smelled kind of like the perfumes that we had last year and those perfumes i bought one of those last year we had a very woody perfume that smelled kind of like sweet wood and then we had a very kind of like spicy perfume and these just smelled to me almost like those so i didn't feel like it was necessary to pick up if you have the perfumes from last year and these sound interesting to you, I would smell this in store because it's a little risky, like it's a little similar. Then we have two shades of the Holiday Wonderlights Bronze Signature Contour Stick. We have Neutral Scent and Intense Walnut. I don't feel like this is enough for sure. Like Intense Walnut is not the deep of a shade. If you have like above a medium skin tone, I would definitely skip this. Also, I feel like the shape of this doesn't entirely work with the actual formula. It's a little bit soft to have this kind of like precise tip. It breaks off a little bit, like it kind of works. The formula itself is really nice, really easy to blend. But it's just not the perfect combination of like the execution and the formula. But I'm for sure going to use this much, much more because I do like the eventual like effect on the skin. Then we have once again these dual lipsticks and glosses. Like they do these a lot. I feel like they sell really well for them. I did quite like the shades that they had in this and I ended up buying Spicy Gingerbread and this is such a beautiful duo. This makes your lips look so good, so juicy. It's really comfortable. I really like this during the day that I was wearing this. I was just looking at my lips and I thought, wow, I look amazing. Then we have the eyeshadow palette that a lot of people were really excited about. I did a look with this eyeshadow palette as well. It's really nice. Like the formulas are quite nice, but the way this is laid out makes it a little like difficult to use. Then we have the Holiday Wonderlights Gleam of Glam Tri Facic Highlighter. I forgot to swatch this, but this seems just like a bit of a gimmicky, a little bit of a hard to use product. Like there's a dropper, you have to shake it and it's just really liquidy, but then there's not a lot of like concentrated shimmer in this. So it's really more about like the liquidiness, about the glow that you get from your cheeks being wet. So I'm kind of thinking this is not going to be like super practical for everyday wear. We also have these magnetic trios. These are 25 euros and you get three shades. I thought it is swatched pretty nicely. I'm sure they are nice quality. I'm sure they look really nice on the eyes, but the eyeshadow palette is just four euros more expensive. Like the eyeshadow palette is 28.99. These are 24.99. I was like, I'm gonna go for more shades, more versatility, more options. I feel like there's not gonna be a crazy difference in the amount of grams, but I just feel like three shades for 25 euros, it's really expensive. I thought that the Sarah Sampeo eyeshadow palette with five shades for 29 or 27, I thought that was expensive. And then they came out with this. I feel like they keep just surprising me with their prices and they keep just shocking me with them. I don't really know what's going on, but I find 25 euros for three shades a lot of money. 
Like it makes me feel a little better about the Sarah Sampaio palettes, but uh, this also kind of like how brands work. Like they make some really expensive products to kind of like give you this anchor point of like what you find normal to pay for makeup from that brand. And they are kind of like upping that point slowly. So yeah, I didn't think this was worth it. Then we have the Marigold highlighter. This looks in the pan like a putty highlighter. It is not, it's truly like kind of like a baked, very dry highlighter. It's not the Baked Gelé highlighter. It's just a very dry powdery highlighter. It does look really nice on the skin. I did really like that. We have the single eyeshadows. Those are pretty cute. Also pretty dry, but they have kind of like that shimmering effect on the lid. The metallic nail lacquer looked really good. Like this is something I would pick up on a sale, on a deal with a little bit of a discount. Not right now because I have so much nail polish. I have so much makeup, like I don't need more, but these nail polishes looked really interesting. And we also have the Radiant Flush Blush. Listen. These blushes look so amazing on the website. They look so amazing in photos and you see them in real life and realize that that shimmery gradient is an overspray. It is not truly what you get. Like underneath there is a satin blush, which is still pretty nice. It's not like a weird powdery talky like powder. It still works. It still swatched nicely, like the overspray had been like swatched off in store already when I came into the store. But yeah, an overspray. I am very <laughs> unhappy about that. Like it's $21.99. It's a pretty expensive blush, especially for Kika Milano and it's an overspray. I don't understand it at all. And I just feel like uh, Essence can do this better. Where did I put it? Essence made the Bloom Light Blush Lighter. Oh. I'm blinding you. Essence made the Bloom Light Blush Lighter, and this is also a gradient, and this is also a blush lighter, and this is also glowy, but this is not an overspray. This is truly just what it is. You get on the cheeks. I'm wearing it right now without a highlighter. This is absolutely gorgeous, and I was hoping that we would get something similar to that from Kika Milano. And this is like a four euro, five euro blush lighter, and they do it better. They do it without the overspray. And Kiko, it's just kind of like trying to fool us and I don't like it. I almost didn't buy it, but I did get it in the end to be able to tell you like what it's really like to give you my review. But honestly, if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't have bought this because I just feel like it's such a bummer. Like, why are you doing this? We also have the shimmery, the sparkly lipstick, the festive sparkly lipstick. Beautiful shades. I have two shades now. I really like the formula. It's very comfortable. It's not like too frosty. I really like it. We have the balm that I already had in the advent calendar. We have some eyeliners that are really nice and sparkly that you can kind of like use as a liquid eyeshadow as well, depending on how you blend it out. And we also have the Glitter Switch lipsticks. The Glitter Switch lipsticks are really pretty, but also a little drying. You already see it in like the lip swatch pictures that Kika put up themselves. If lips in a very highly edited picture don't look good, I'm always like, then it's really, really not good in real life. It's like, you couldn't even edit it away. Like, it makes the lips look really dry. It feels pretty dry. Like, it has a nice shimmer to it. It has some nice colors, but honestly, I am a little disappointed in how drying that is. But also, like, a part of me is like, is it because of the shimmer? Is this just a type of formula that always feels kind of like powdery and dry? Because the Essence one from the Up Collection that felt a little better at first did end up feeling pretty powdery after a while, like after a wear test. So I'm kind of like, what's up with these glitter switch lipsticks? I think I talked about most of the things that I thought were interesting from this Kiko collection. If you want any more information, if there's anything else you want to see, if there's anything else you're like, can you please like tell me what that or that was like? I can even like go into store maybe and just swatch a few more things if you're interested. But I'll probably not buy any more from the holiday collection at this point. I feel like I have what I need to make up my mind about this collection. I feel like the theming that they did this year mm, isn't super inspiring. But I do like the packaging more than what they had last year. Like the packaging last year was a little bit more bulky. I think overall the quality of the products I like more than last year. I feel like last year was a little bit forgettable. And I was really liking my look that I got in the end. 
If you haven't yet, watch that video. This was a week where I actually bought a lot of makeup. I feel like I need some time to really like get through it. I'm gonna try and not buy any more makeup for the rest of the week. Let's see if that actually happens. I'm gonna try and like reel myself in a little bit. All right, let me know if there's anything especially you'd like to know. By the way, I also bought in the end the palette from Glam Shop. I put it in my community tab. A lot of people seem to be interested in it. So something is going to be coming up with that as well. So you see, like a lot is happening. But okay, that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye.